what she'll do wrong today. Matilda Gillespie, though she preferred her maiden name, Matilda Cavendish. Thank you, Dr. Blakeney. I'm sorry I had to subject you to such oh, a... Oh, did you think I'd become hysterical? No. I never thought anything of the kind. I prescribed her two tablets of Coproximal four times a day. I also gave her diclofenac or misoprostol, but only when she had a crisis, when she was mm. actually crippled by the pain. Thank you. What's that thing? It's a scold's bridle. A primitive instrument of repression. When you take it off, you will find that there's a sharp metal bit that presses. So. In the Middle Ages, they were used to shut up scolds. That is, nagging women. Barbaric. It's been in her family for years. What about the nettles? The flowers? Maybe she wanted to look like Ophelia. Ophelia? A character from Hamlet. She drowned herself with a garland of flowers. Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. What was she like? Was she the type to kill herself? Is there a type, Inspector Cooper? It's Sergeant. Well? Very proud, very snobbish, very intolerant, arrogant, with a vicious tongue. I liked her. Why? Because she was clever, with a dry sense of humour. Because in another age, she could have done so much more. Because in the end, she was vivid and rather fine. And no despite the pain of her arthritis. 
She was not the type to kill herself. Are you sure? Look, I have a lot to do. Um, you have my home number. I'm either there or in the surgery. I have no other life. Thank you. Jenny has the only key to the back door. Who's Jenny? You daft. Her. Jenny Speed and Bob Speed. Right. Robert. He likes to be called Robert. Yes. Come in, Inspector. It's Sergeant. Sorry about the high security. One has to be so careful these days. Violet, uh, this is Sergeant Cooper, a detective. He has to ask us some questions. Yes. I understand. Hello. I'm sorry to put you through this. Would you like to sit down? Mrs. Orloff, did you hear anything or see anything out of the ordinary over the weekend? Was she raped? No. Whatever gave you that idea? They do such terrible things, these gangs from Bournemouth. Jenny Speed, her cleaner, said Matilda was like Christ. Did they crucify her? In all probability, Mrs. Gillespie committed suicide. She was found in the bath. Wearing a scold's bridle. That's a kind of medieval. Oh, I hated that thing. Filthy perversion. How long have you known Mrs. Gillespie? As long as I can remember. Well, we keep ourselves to ourselves. Matilda was a great beauty, you know. Quite breathtaking. Well, we were all young and beautiful once. <laughs> she sold us this wing of the house when I retired five years ago. We never listen, but we sometimes hear. There used to be doors right through. They're blocked up now, but you can still hear. When her daughter comes down to visit her... Now, that'll be Mrs. Lassells. And her granddaughter, Ruth. Now, she's at boarding school, isn't she? Were they in the house the day Matilda died? No. You can't help but hear. Language worse than on Channel 4. So you heard nothing? Not a dicky bird until Jenny Speed started screaming. Of course, we went over to help. My wife tried to calm her while I called you. If Matilda committed suicide, it was her daughter who drove her to it. That's Matilda's daughter. Jack, it's a funeral. And the other one's Ruth. Presumably. I'm very grateful, Dr. Blakeney, for all you did to help my mother. There is tea at the house. I can't Thank you, that's very nice. How will you get home? I'll beg a lift. Someone's bound to be going my way.
your husband. What? He doesn't hang about, does he? He's an artist. He wants to paint her. Can we talk? I, I have patients waiting. Please, Dr. Blakeney, I need your help. Please. Give me a moment. husband says he spent the night of the murder with an actress called Sally Benedict in her digs in Stratford-upon-Avon, banging our brains out. My husband may cheat, but he does not lie. So you admit it's a murder now? A picturesque suicide, my inspector calls it. He wants it all wrapped up. Oh, limited resources. Just like the health service. It was possible. Even for an arthritic old woman. She strips us off naked, she takes the barbiturates, she puts on the skull's bridle, fastening it round her own head, the metal bit biting into her tongue. She arranges the flowers. Weeds. She steps into the bath and slashes her wrist with a knife from the kitchen drawer. Why the bath? Why the weeds? Why no note? Why the skull's bridle? Oh, why indeed. Pills are a so much better way of silencing a woman. If I prove this is murder, if I catch a murderer, I might just be able to retire on an inspector's pension. But is this about your pension or Matilda's death? It's about both. You're an honest man, Sergeant Cooper. Come on, boys. Oh, my shoe came off. Come on. Brave, but he will panic if I'm late. Oh, yeah. along. Dr. Hewitt and I are having a bite to eat anyway to discuss the practice business. So I'll see you tomorrow. You see you. Bye. Crowned with rank fumiter and farrow weeds, with burdock, hemlock, nettles, cuckoo flowers. Hamlet. King Lear. Different thing entirely if it's King Lear. She could not stand the pain of an ungrateful daughter. She killed herself. If she'd been forced into the bridle, there'd be marks and scratches around her head. If she'd struggled at all, it would have chafed her forehead. Not if it was wedged by the sponge we found in the bath. Look, the only other person with a key to the house was Jenny Speed, the cleaner, who A, is far too simple to do this, and B, has a cast iron alibi. There's not the slightest sign of a forced entry. Everyone else who had access to the house has an alibi. Nothing was stolen. There are no bruises on the body indicating a struggle. Why wear the skull's bridle? I don't know. Maybe she thought she might lose her nerve and shout for help. Look, Coop. An unhealthy obsession with one case is just the sort of thing the Police Promotions Board will pick you up on. They'll also look at your timesheets. They'll calculate the excessive overtime you've been putting in on this. Where are you going to, dressed up like a penguin, anyway? Charity Gala, Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra. The Jupiter. Mozart's last symphony. All right, old knees up. Well, don't knock it. Most of the police committee will be there. Oh, and uh, don't wear that tie to your promotions board.
You're late. I spend all day wrestling for breath and you're bloody late. Please, Paul, don't. Not tonight. You're playing me back, aren't you? Taking your revenge. You know that's not true, Paul. Matilda's dead. Now you want me dead too. Cool. I know how you suffer, my darling. Believe me, I do. But you mustn't upset yourself. The past is over and forgotten. Hard day in the office, dear. Practice meeting. Should we or should we not have a nice modern clinic and scrap all of the little village clinics? And let the Holt and the Lame crawl towards treatment as best they can. Joanna Lassell's naturally. It's a beginning. Jack, I've had enough. I'm not surprised. Yeah, as you work, and then having to have supper with that pompous old fart Hewitt as well. What are you going to do? I want a divorce. Uh. Moving from London, that was going to be our new beginning, Jack. This house, your perfect studio. Forgive and forget, but I am not a saint, Jack. You said you would never see Sally Benedict again. Don't you dare speak. You told Sergeant Cooper that you were with her the night of the murder. It's a civic duty to lie to the police. Oh, please, no jokes. I am tired of being mocked because you go through life with a paintbrush tied to your brick. Uh, can I say something now? No! I am tired of taking chemicals to make myself barren while you spray your seed through equity. I don't want to have to organize another abortion for another of your bastards, especially when... Especially when I've always refused to give you a child. Want a divorce. Well, what can I say? Huh? Since you're judge, jury, execution, I believe what you bloody well like. I make no secret of where I go. Even your betrayals demand an audience now. Took your time. James. Who's that? Uh, just a minute. I can't talk now. Baby needs new shoes. I've sent it. You're bleeding. 
bleeding me dry. How can I give you what I haven't got? You know what I'll do. Please. Jane! Who was that? Uh, double glazing. Hmm. Bastards. Send the divorce papers to your old flame, the ghastly Keith Smollett. I'll be going for a 50-50 split, so don't get too attached to the house. I'll clear the studio as soon as I've found somewhere else. Matilda committed suicide. I don't much care. She was quite the nastiest woman I've ever met. Jane? No, I refuse to be a hypocrite about her. If she rang the surgery, she spoke to me like a dim servant, even though we'd grown up together. She was always the most beautiful in there. It was her the boys wanted to dance with. Her the boys wanted. <laughs> Knocked us all for six when she chose James Gillespie to marry. Why? Well, he was very handsome and dashing and always beautifully dressed, but I mean, it was such an obvious one, you know. Oh. Well, uh, gay, I think, is a modern word. Still, she was pregnant when she married him, so he must have got it up at least once. They went to live in London. All too glittering for us down here. And what happened to him? Well, they divorced and he went to live in Hong Kong. You never heard from him again? I'm afraid you've got a very busy morning. They all want you.
Mann. That'll be Mummy's solicitor. Bruce Dearest, let him in. I think he's called Dougal. It's Duggan. Tim Duggan. I really don't know why he wants you here. Uh, I am here as one of the executors of the estate of Mrs. Matilda Beryl Gillespie of Cedar House, Fontwell, Dorset. Uh, in a moment, I will give you copies of her last will and testament, which supersedes all other wills made by Mrs. Gillespie. Uh, about a month ago, she asked me here to make an inventory of her possessions, purely to avoid any acrimonious arguments between the relative parties after the will has been read. I have never seen the point of this vulgar and debased medium before. However, the prospect of talking to you, Joanna, no doubt, quietly seething. And Ruth, with your ridiculous tantrums, seems too good to pass up. Sarah, I apologize in advance for dragging you into this cursed family. But in the short time I have known you, I have realized that you are a very special person with the authority and integrity to take up the burden I am to place on your shoulders. I was raped for the first time by my uncle Lionel when I was 13. My father, Sir William, the supremely respectable MP, connived in this because he needed his brother Lionel's money. We had no money of our own. When I became pregnant by my own uncle, my father to avoid a scandal, married me off to James Gillespie, of whom the best thing that can be said is that he never raped a woman. Joanna is Lionel's daughter. Joanna, I schemed, I plotted, I struggled to give you a decent upbringing when my so-called husband, James Gillespie, had to flee from England to Hong Kong after an incident in a public lavatory in Hendon. When your father, Uncle Lionel, became old and maudlin, he made a will and tried to leave his money to his natural daughter, Joanna. It was this will, Joanna, you found one day and came out screaming that the money was all yours and you would throw me out onto the streets. We shall see who is thrown onto the streets. Lionel's will is worthless. He would have had to go to court and swear to having sex with his brother's underage child. When his brother, my father, explained this to him, he killed himself with an overdose of barbiturates, the only decent thing he ever did. I came back here to take care of my father, whose own health was failing. Women, take courage from this. Ruth, my dear, men get old first then they are in our power. And when they drink like my father, they get old fast. Soon we are wheeling the tyrants around in their chairs. I made the old fool wear the scold's bridle if he whined at me. Ruth, I had intended to leave the money to Joanna and Cedar House to you. However, since you turned 17, your behavior has, even by modern standards, appalled me. Despite the exorbitant fees I am paying to Southcliff, you are growing into a ghastly little monster to rival your mother. I have come to realize that neither you nor Joanna are capable of a decent or 
generous thought. So, I intend to leave my money to Dr. Sarah Blakeney of Mill House, Long Upton, Dorset. In so far as I have ever felt any fondness for anyone, I have felt it for you, Sarah. Don't be angry with me. I must have died without changing my mind or you wouldn't be watching this. So remember me for our friendship, not for this burden I have laid on you. Joanna and Ruth will hate you as they have hated me. And they will accuse you of all manner of beastliness, just as they have accused me. But what's done cannot be undone. So take it all with my blessing. And use it to promote something worthwhile in my memory. This means nothing. A video will has no standing. Uh, which is why your mother had me draw up and witness this. You'll find it follows her words to the letter, dotting every I and crossing every T. I'm not going to let you get away with this. Well, I refuse to accept the bequest anyway. Well, you certainly have that right. Uh, in which case, the money goes to the Seaton Retirement Home for Donkeys. If Dr. Blakeney didn't want it, Mrs. Gillespie said it should benefit deserving asses. If I fight it? Well, I'm not your solicitor, but my considered professional opinion is you will lose. My advice, and bearing in mind Dr. Blakeney's initial refusal to accept the legacy, is that you should all sit down together and work something out between you. When can I meet you? Shall we say Thursday at my office? The sooner the better. I'll get someone to cover for me. Now, I must go. Poor Dr. Blakeney. I think you're beginning to realise how ruthless my mother was. The dictator is dead. Long live the dictator. I have never seen the point of this vulgar and debased <sighs> medium before. Delighted to inherit well over a million pounds. It's never as much as that. The house, a collection of clocks, shares. That's your solicitor's estimate. Tim Duggan is not my solicitor. He's Matilda's solicitor. That is precisely the point. All her life, she's used her money to manipulate people. Now she's using it on me. I hate it. Did you kill her, Dr. Blakeney? What? You prescribed the barbiturates. You have no alibi, and you have one hell of a motive. But I didn't know. You are the prime suspect. You don't believe I killed her, do you? One of your dependents might have done it. What dependents? I have no dependents. Your husband, Jack, is dependent. Jack doesn't care about money. Anyway, we're separated. You were together at the funeral. Come with me.
this. This is what Jack cares about. I hadn't realized. No. I don't suppose you would. The way you all talked about him, I thought he was just a wanker. I didn't realize it was so bloody good. Why are you so keen to go to university all of a sudden? A few weeks ago, you were saying you weren't even going to bother with A-levels. I don't want to end up like you, spreading my legs for money. Better a whore than a thief. Matilda kept a list of all the things you stole. Fortunately for you, the police were too stupid to find it. She wouldn't have minded. She always gave me everything I wanted. Oh, perhaps I'll give it to them, let you rot in prison for a bit. Perhaps I'll tell them how you tried to kill me when I was a baby, how you drove Daddy to his death, how you killed Matilda. How you were here, not in school, on the day she died. I would never have hurt Granny. I loved her. She told me how Daddy loved me. How when I was a baby, he would stare at me for hours, cradling me in his arms. He was stoned, my darling girl. Get this into your thick little A-level head. Your Daddy only loved one thing. Heroin. But he was beautiful. Don't touch me. With certain lights, you're so like him. Leave me. And to the third and fourth generation. Matilda's poison's in us all. And it's worse than any drug. You two know each other, I think. Hello, Cook. I'm saying nothing without my lawyer present. Well, it's just a few questions, but if you want me to make it official... No, not to you. To Sarah. The wife and I are getting a divorce, and she's tricky. I'm not very worldly, you see, Coop. Jack is renowned for his wit. I've heard all his jokes, so if there's nothing else, I'll leave here. Just so you know, I've decided to stay at Cedar House with Joanna Lassels and the little amuse girl, Ruth. Amuse what? It means titbit. Literally, amusement for the palate. An artist needs room to paint and some stimulation. Not the spectacle of holy other now women nailing themselves to their own suffering. You bastard. You've probably heard that I exploit my wife. True. She supports me and I paint, but I give her something priceless in return. The pictures. No. Though she'll doubtless make a fortune from those when I'm dead. What then? Yes, what? I'd really like to know. I give her the passion she is incapable of. <clears throat> Do you think anyone's even faintly <sighs> amused by you anymore, Jack? 50-50. I will sell. And give it to a donkey's home first. Ooh. There you are, Sergeant. I've done the third degree for you. Ask your question. She doesn't take any prisoners, does she? Just lie still and breathe deeply. I'm going to be sick. How long were you intimate with Mrs. Gillespie? Intimate? Well, I would think painting someone in the nude was pretty intimate. Oh, you know, the idea excites you, doesn't it, Coop? My wife excites you, too. It's funny, I thought you'd be more the time to dream of peeling the gym slips slowly off pubescent schoolgirls. Did you paint any more pictures of her? <clears throat> she commissioned a portrait. Good God, I'll have to ask my wife to honour the contract. <laughs> I never thought of that. There should be some sketches there. Take a look. God, she was brave. 
Yep. She was a heroine. She would not be broken. Not by her history, nor by her arthritis. If somebody got the better of her. Yeah. If I ever catch the bastard, I'll lock my hands around his throat and squeeze the life out of him. Did you love her? As a subject, yes. But not in the way I love Sarah. Matilda suggested the nudity. It was her idea. And the skull's bridle? Was that her idea too? Yeah. This is me. This is my pain. Take me as I am. And did you? No. I don't generally sleep with the people I paint. There's no need. Well, that's a relief. Why? Because I'd like you to paint my portrait. Perhaps it might help me see who I really am. Do you have a picture of your wife? You don't like it? No, I think it's bloody brilliant. It's not like her, it is her. All that strength, all that infuriating honesty. It's like looking at her through a glass that makes her more real. Well, of course, it's, it's barely finished, this area. Well, I don't know how you do it, but I pay 2,000 quid for a portrait of me and the wife by you. Well, perhaps we could make a deal. Well, not that I have 2,000 quid, but if I did, To do it where you did it to her. I want you to do it to me on Mother's bed. Hey! Duncan, ring the police. Thank you. Why not, after what I've heard? If you don't listen, you won't get upset. Ruth called her mother. A whore, and apparently, Joanna says, Ruth was stealing from Matilda. That's evidence they should know. It's none of our business. What about when the place is sold? What happens to us then? We could have anyone living next door. Noisy games, parties, sex orgies. Oh my God. It's pronounced orgies. Now take a valium, have another sherry, and lie down. I will make the supper. Do you know something you haven't told the police? Do you know who killed Matilda? Oh, pull yourself together. It's not our business. This is boring. Don't bloody move. 
I'll do anything you want, Jack. Would you wear this gold's bridle for me? No. Well, that's lucky, because Sergeant Cooper probably takes it home every night anyway. She made me wear it as a child. It was the only time she ever showed me any affection. She'd put her arm around my waist and rub her cheek against the cold iron framework. By the time I was 14, she'd only have to show it me and I'd have a fit. When I found out Lionel was my father, I saw she was frightened of me. Frightened I'd go mad like him. <sighs> I'll do anything that frigid bitch you're married to refuses to do. Leave Sarah out of it. Bet she's childless, because she's such a bloody boring screw. Well, let's see this picture, then. Show me my soul. Gladly. Well, you wouldn't want that dark to Sarah touching me. Not now. Oh, is that what the gossips are saying? I was wondering why my surgery was thinning out. As far as I'm concerned, if you killed that old bitch to get her money, good luck to you. Ah. Head's not engaged yet. You were wrong. <sighs> A few more days then before I'm into the farrowing crate. What else are they saying? Oh, it's just talk. Tell me. They say your husband left you to live with Joanna Lassels because he was so shocked that you'd use your position as GP to turn Mrs Gillespie against her family. Oh, and this is the same Jack Blakeney that the gossips love to hate because he's living off his wretched wife. Oh, I didn't mean to upset you, love. Oh, that's all right. First things first, this is your third, and you are not a sow, <laughs> despite your jokes about flowering crates. <laughs> She'll come quickly, so be a bit careful. She? How do you know that? Oh, I don't. It's just that with those two boys herring around the farm, you could use someone sensible. <sighs> so, ring me if you've got any worries. It's only a baby. Polly, I'm being serious. You be careful, too. I'm sorry, love. I'll be a couple of hours, yeah? You have to? Yes. Is it that bloody murder? Yes. I'm sorry. Did June finish her essay? She says nearly. Oh. She's out with Wendy. Oh, she's not staying out late again, is she? The books she needs aren't back in the library till tomorrow. No. Oh, all right. Try not to be too late. Yes, I'll be as quick as I can. Lassels was in Cedar House the day Mrs. Gillespie died. She stole some earrings. Joanna knows who stole them. Joanna Lassels is a prostitute in London. Ask her what she spends her money on. Ask her why she tried to kill her daughter. Ask her why Mrs. Gillespie thought she was mad. Block capitals. Good punctuation. Spelling. Well, it's not Jenny's bead. Ruth was under the watchful eye of her headmistress. She couldn't have got there. I mean, Southless, what? Fifty miles. She'd need a car. She can't drive. Sarah. I 
about to be going. Maybe someone gave her a lift. Study. You'll be fine in the drawing room. This way. How many girls have you here? 350. How many teachers? 36. Here we are. And here is Ruth. Ruth, I will stay with you if you like while you talk to the detective. That won't be necessary, Miss Hedges. I've been questioned by Sergeant Cooper before. I'll be all right. I'll see that you're not disturbed. Well, this is quite a place. I wish my daughters had your advantages. It's not as good as it looks. Well, shall we sit down? I think I'll stand. Miss Larson's. My daughter June is about your age, doing her A-levels like you. I don't want to come in here like some kind of heavy. Let's just talk as I would to her. I don't see why you come here at all. It's not exactly going to make my life easy. I don't suppose you know what a boarding school is like. No, I don't. But I do know when a young girl's got herself in a mess, when she could use some help. I'm not a young girl. I'm nearly 18 years old. 17 and two months. Why were you stealing from Matilda? I wasn't. I got a list. Who told you to steal these things? Granny always gave me things. Who gave you a lift to see the house on the day Matilda died? I hitched. So you admit you were there? I want a lawyer. Right. I'll get Miss Hedges in. I'll have to call a squad car. They'll come in with headlights flashing and siren blaring and 350 pairs of eyes will watch you being taken out and handcuffed. Wait. Go on, later. If someone comes in, hand it to me. I'll cut their wrap. bedside table. I covered it and then put it back. It's a very professional list, small, valuable items. You're not a professional thief, but he is, isn't he? What's his name? I don't. I don't. Where were you fencing it? Is it drugs? No, I would never touch drugs. Ruth, I look at you. I see an intelligent young woman who's done her best in a very difficult life. But some things you can't handle on your own. Let me help. Look, I don't care about the thieving. What's more important is Matilda's death. He came 
came to do the tarmac. I'd sneak out and go on trips in his van, walk on the beach, eat fish suppers. Did you have sex? He made love in his van. Then his business started to go wrong. Granny was so rich. I mean, if I'd asked her for money, she'd have given it. He gave, he gave me a Polaroid camera. <laughs> I took photos of her antiques. <laughs> then he told me what to steal. So he never even went in the house? How long has this been going on? All last term. And this summer. Nearly five months. What's his name? Please. Dave. Dave Hughes? Bastard! I, I never said anything, you just guessed. He can't blame me, can he? God, what will I do? I'll get expelled and I'll never get my A-levels. My only chance to get away from him is to go to university far away. You have very bravely told the truth. Now you will see how the bird lifts. We will go to your headmistress. I will tell her what kind of man has led you astray. She will understand. I don't know what Jack's problem is. It's a perfectly sweet little summer house. Shut up about Jack. He has a habit of intruding on every conversation I have. I've come to build some bridges. Oh, very good. Please, Joanna, we have to be rational. I went through a lifetime of hell with Matilda and I got nothing. You sweet talker for a few months and you get the lot. I admired your mother. Some people admire Hitler. I hated her guts. She's down there pulling our strings. Even now she's in hell, we're still dancing to her tune. If I give up the money, you will have to fight the charity for it. If we leave this to the lawyers, you and I will die with nothing and they'll still be pocketing fees. Female solidarity, is it? If you had any idea how ridiculous you are, Mrs. Frigid, Dr. Blayton. Think about Ruth, hmm? We have to sort something out quickly for her sake. Leave my daughter out of this. What would you know about children anyway? Oh, please, Joanna. Is this how you talk to my mother? How she must have fallen for the sweetly reasonable Dr. Sarah, always ready with the pills and the needle. Maybe you think I haven't got a case. But juries aren't stupid. Wait till they hear about your husband painting her in the nude. Wait till they see the evidence of his sketches. We have got to make a deal. 
I don't want a deal. I want surrender. Now I have to go to get back to work. You can let yourself out. What are you doing here? Yeah, I couldn't paint in that candle of a summer house. Something I had to finish, so I came back. God. Good job I did. Coop was on the doorstep with Ruth. Ruth? This is the Chateau Trollong Mondo. It's very nice. It's not bad. Grab yourself a glass. We'll deal with you later. De million. Grand Cru Classe. About 50 pounds bottle. How well, the other half live? Shut up. Yesterday, Polly Graham informs me that I'm regarded as a murderer by most of my patients, whilst the remaining few have invented imaginary diseases so they can come and gawp at me like I'm a freak. This afternoon, abuse from your new girlfriend, Joanna. This evening, ex-husband and Sergeant Plod swilling down wine that I had pathetically laid down for our 10th wedding anniversary as if it were Budweiser. Ruth's asleep in the spare room. She's been expelled. It's my fault. <laughs> Coop persuaded her to confess, to make a clean breast of it to the school. Apparently she'd been having an affair with a minor criminal. I thought they'd understand. They'd help her. I never thought they'd chuck her out in her ear. But Surely they rang her mother. Correct me if I've got this wrong, Coop. She can sleep in a cardboard box, for all I care. I'm not having her here. I've got too much to do. We know this Dave Hughes. We've never been able to pin anything on him. He preys on lonely young girls from rich families. He seduces them, then he gets them to steal for him. He's very clever. If the girls get caught, their families refuse to let them testify. He even gets them defensive stuff for him, too. It's a sweet operation, practically foolproof. And there's something else. He has some way of punishing the girls. Some way of enslaving them. She's absolutely terrified he's going to come back and get her. Get her and do it to her again. Do these doors lock? Sergeant Cooper's here, I'm here. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Bed, darling.
mayor had another go at me last night about car radios. He said it's beginning to affect the tourist trade. Tell him the kids need them to buy drugs. Very funny. I got the landlord of the Three Pigeons. Says he saw Hughes's van in his car park the day Matilda was murdered. We have to do something visible. High profile. Dramatic. I want to pick Hughes up. Scare the shit out of that bastard. That could be just the sort of thing they'd like to see. Hughes doesn't make car radios? I know that, but they don't. What's all this, then? Young crime fighter of the year. I'm presenting a cup to the kid who's won. I'm making a speech. Shall I pick him up, then, Dave Hughes? Well... No, I'll do it. Tomorrow morning, first light. He'll have a hangover, and we'll probably make the breakfast news. Hello, young friend. Never betray you, Dave. Never. You better not. Just remember what happens. What happens if you're a stupid bitch? He calls it a training session. There are five of them in the squat with him at Palace Road. The oldest is very old. Forty. The youngest only 15. They all wear track suits and trainers like they're going for a run. If a girl's been bad, if she's tried to escape from him or grasp to her parents, then she doesn't know what will happen. Dave picks her up like for a normal date and then drives in his van to the harbour. The girl is put in the back of the van while Dave goes for a long run around the docks. The others take turns with her. <laughs> One after another, after another. <laughs> Two and three at once. <laughs> they drink their cans and watch and joke. You filthy whore! You slag! You know you love it, you dirty tart. She can't do anything. <laughs> They're too strong. Again and again and again, so she'll stink of them all her life. when I got pregnant.
Stepping out for a moment, Constable. I'll take responsibility. I'll be outside the door. Watch him. He's a vicious bastard. Attempted murder, GBH, abduction, dangerous driving, assault on a police officer. You forgot. I have no MOT. The girl, Julia Sefton, thinks you're one of them. Two huge crew are in hospital. One with a suspected fractured skull. The youngest can't be charged because it's a juvenile. They all swear the gangbang was a girl's idea, and Hugh says he'd no idea what was going on. It's a disaster. I had to save her. Will you listen? They'll get off scot-free. The only one to go to court is you. What do you want me to do? Stop and find a phone box? Call Esther bloody ransom? If one of those kids dies, it'll be murder. What if Julia Sefton testifies? Fat chance. Ha! Why didn't you tell me Ruth had been gang raped? I could have picked up Hughes there and then. Ruth swore me to silence. Besides, you'll never find the courage to testify now, and who can blame her? If Sarah and I work hard enough at it, we can maybe bring her back to some semblance of normal life. I'll have to try and hush it up. I can't see Hughes and his crew pressing charges. The girl's father's in the same lodge as a super who runs this station. He's a JP, he doesn't want a scandal. I'll do what I can. In the meantime, at least try and look as if you're sorry. And for Christ's sake, don't hit any more coppers.
I want my clocks, Duggan. Two mahogany long case. A Danson, the Scrivener, the Queen Anne Bull, and the Deloney Ormolu. All in the inventory of my father's estate. You'll find the identical clocks in Matilda's house. Ergo, my clocks. Mr. Gillespie, let me just recap your story. Story? Matilda wrote to you in Hong Kong in April 1961. See? Informing you of the theft of the clocks and forwarding you £12,000 from the insurance money, which you accepted. About £100,000 in today's money. Weren't stolen, were they? Still in the house. The fact remains, Mr. Gillespie, she offered you the equivalent of £100,000 for them and you accepted it. She cheated me as she cheated her own daughter. As she blackmailed her father and her uncle to get her hands on the estate. You, or your firm, probably connived in her swindles. <sighs> Mr. Gillespie, if you intend to make unfounded allegations, I must Shut warn up, you. Shut up, you little pipsqueak. Joanna actually saw Matilda smother Sir William. Her own father. Read Matilda's diaries. Her diaries? <laughs> it's all in there. She can never resist writing down every sordid detail. Do you know where these diaries might be? <laughs> Disguised as a set of William Shakespeare. Top shelf in the bookcase in her drawing room. Mrs. Lassels, you must tell us where the diaries are. What do you think I've been doing, you bunch of bloody useless assholes? Yeah. The diaries should look like the works of William Shakespeare. But they'll be handwritten, and she could have put other loose covers on them. I want every single volume checked. It'll be good for your education. Carry on. This is my house! Where's my brief? Why am I still here? Rape? Conspiracy to rape? Abduction? Holding without consent? Conspiracy to hold without consent? Assault? Sexual assault? Theft? Handling stolen goods? Corruption? Conspiracy to pervert the course of justice? Is that all? Sarah Langdon, Gina McNeese, Leslie James, Sally Vincent Moyles, Julia Safton, currently in hospital after the little party you organized for her last night. Those are just the ones we know about. Do you deny you had sex with them? Why should I? They're all over 16. Ruth Lassell's been telling Slag. me. Slag. How exactly would you define a slag? Ruth Lassels. And for that matter, Sarah Langdon, Gina McNeese, Leslie James, Sally Vincent Moyles, and Julia Safton. Listen, let's cut to the chase here. What those lads did in my van, that was right out of order. I had no idea. I thought they were going for fish and chips while I did my run. It's a sweet system, isn't it? You're always at arm's length on the crime. The thieving, the fencing, the rape. <laughs> I never raped anyone. Those girls, they only meet chinless wonders. Limp-digged, upper-class twats. Is it my fault if they roll over and spread it at the first sight of a real man? I think we should switch this off. Interview concludes 11.45 a.m. I'd rather you didn't. Passive smoking's a killer. I don't spend 14 hours a week down the gym to have it all ruined by a vice I don't indulge in. Fair enough, I suppose. You were quite right, of course. Those slags. You could hardly be blamed. I mean, what man wouldn't when it's an offer? Anyway, that's not my case. I need to know about Matilda Gillespie's murder. 
Ruth tells me you gave her a lift there the day the old girl snuffed it. There's no crime in that, is there? None at all. <laughs> she says you told her what to steal. That's a lie. Of course. But you gave her a lift. Your van's been spotted round there several times. She had to keep in with her gran. That's what she said. I used to wait for her. We drive back, do the business, and then I get her back in time for prep. That's like homework that they do in a room together. Did you ever see anyone enter the house while you were waiting around for Ruth? No, only the cleaner. And that red-faced maniac who tried to kill me last night, he was in and out there all the time. If anyone did it, it was him. What about the Arlovs? Who? Hey. That's a fat old geezer with a mad wife. They were around. In their part of the garden. You know, weeding. If you did remember anyone, or anything out the ordinary, I could do you a bit of good upstairs. Well, once... Ruth had asked me to pick her up from there. I waited and I waited, but she didn't come. So I, um, went up the kitchen. Well, you knew your way around then. Uh, like I said, she was a slag. When no one was around, she liked to do it in the garden. Bit of an extra kick. Is that for her or for you? I thought she might have forgotten the time. I peered in through the window and suddenly I heard someone coming. Hadn't heard a car. So I dived in behind the bushes. Who was it? I couldn't see. He went to the back door and he called out Ruth, Joanna, Matilda. Then there was a scraping sound and he let himself in. What did he sound like? Old, young, posh? Old and posh. But short of breath, like he was unfit. And he had a key. Either that or he knew where to find one. break into my house. How did you get in? How? Shut up. Don't speak to me like that. Where did you get that key? Don't you touch You've that. had a key all along. I'm calling the police. Hello? This is Dr. Blakeney. Get me Sergeant Cooper, please. It's urgent. The murderer had a key. Oh, I've done something really, really stupid. What do you mean you forgot? I just did. Matilda put it there for me months ago, when her arthritis was really bad. She was frightened that in an emergency she wouldn't be able to answer the door to me. So you picked it up and now it's got your prints on it. Very convenient. Oh, I made a mistake. You're supposed to have searched the bloody place. Don't touch anything else. I'm coming right over. Motive, method, and now opportunity. Ooh, let's see you wriggle out of this one. What are you on? Hmm? Speed and Valium. You're not injecting. Jack says every inch of you is flawed. Stay away from me. Your daughter needs you. She needs your love. No! <laughs> Ruth made me so ugly. For nine months, I was obscene. Men turned away. She ripped me open, made me bleed for weeks. Then she screamed day and night. Nobody told me what to do with the baby. Matilda found me with a pillow. You have to understand, I was only trying to stop Ruth screaming, that was all. I needed help. 
Joanna, you've been very bad. You'll have to wear the bridle. She held it up. I had a fit. When I came to, she gave me pills. You're lucky. I had no Valium, dear. I had to manage on my own. And I did manage after that. Something the matter? No. Jane. Is it Paul? This is breathing was. The police took my fingerprints. Sergeant Cooper's coming to see me. He knows I lied. Cooper? I stole the pills for her. The barbiturates. But that is nonsense. Everybody knows that I prescribed them for Matilda. No, not now. For Lionel, years ago. I didn't know she was going to kill him. But that's no defence, is it? I'm an accessory. Jane, what are you talking about? Come sit down. Start at the beginning. Right. How do you know that the pills were used to kill Lionel? Because she boasted of it to James Gillespie. She ground them up and put them in her uncle's Horlicks. She said the only thing she regretted was that he didn't suffer. Where did Cooper find your prints? In Matilda's house. I said I hadn't been there for years, but I went to see Matilda just before she died. You see, Paul had fathered a child with Matilda, and he never knew. What? I knew the story would come out. The moment James Gillespie came back like a ghost. He's back? Oh, yes. He has no money. He was trying to get money out of Matilda. He makes me pay his rent. How can he do that? Oh, easy. By threatening to tell Paul about the baby. He knows he'll do anything to prevent that. What happened to the child? Uh, she was adopted. She'd be about your age. I told Paul nothing. I was so ashamed. He was unfaithful and you were ashamed? Because Matilda could give him the baby, I couldn't. We'll get Cooper to interview you here. Give the money away. Burn it. Anything. Don't suck Matilda's poison in, dear Sarah. Please don't. Hi, uh, Ruth. She's asleep. Finally. I tried ringing Joanna today. She put the phone down on me. I'll drive over there tomorrow. I have to borrow your car. They've impounded mine. And my bill. You will do no such thing. Cooper only got you out on the condition that you stay in this house and report to the police. Someone's got to make that woman see sense. Listen, darling. You are in deep shit. Just be sensible. I know it's hard, but try. I didn't sleep with Joanna. I just did the picture. I know.
Mr. James Gillespie, Detective Sergeant Cooper, police. Well? May I come in? Why? Well, I'd like to ask you some questions about your late wife. Off license down below. Bottle of decent whiskey. A hand plan will do. Pay you when you get back. Right, your check. wife was murdered. I thought it was suicide. You went to see her. I wanted my property back. She cheated me. Blackmailed me. Drink up. Blackmail? You've no idea what it was like in the 1950s. You bastards made our lives hell. She had photos. My own wife hired a private dick to photograph me putting my dick where it shouldn't have been. But you went to see her when you came back to England. Three times. Came back like a bad smell. She laughed at me, as she did in the old days. And she had nothing on me. I slapped her sniggering face. You hit her? Taste of her own medicine. She liked to hurt men. Put that bridle on her father. <laughs> I once caught her with Duncan Orloff, stark naked. Crawling across the floor with that thing on. <laughs> he was loving it. And she called me a pervert. Tell me about the diaries. The solicitor blabbed, didn't he? Well, what else do you expect? I gave them to her when we married. Blank pages in uh, brown calfskin leather. Ten volumes, it all. She's just about filled them by the time she died. An extravagant present. Especially as you hated her. That's a tragedy. I didn't hate her then. I was prepared to play her game. I would have been discreet about my tastes. In those days, you bloody stayed in the closet anyway. Nobody else was going to be a husband to her six months gone. I didn't love her, but... I knew what it was to be unable to love. I wasn't always like this. She ruined me. She used me and broke me. I was meant to drink myself to death in the colony. Instead, I came back, a festering zombie in her drawing room. I'll have to take a statement. Get them to send me a pretty young copper next time, in uniform. Someone to take my teeth out for. Oh, shit. Now I have Bismarck over here. Last night she was sobbing. Who's this now? With Joanna, of course. I keep thinking, what if they sell the house? Dr. Sarah won't want to live there. We could have anyone living next to us. Joanna will tie Sarah up in litigation for years. By the time it's all sorted, we'll be dead. 
At least the bloody granddaughter's gone. Doesn't scream at her all day. Well, I worry about Ruth, too, living in the same house as Jack, an artist. Don't you worry about anything? Yes, my tea's cold. I shall go round. I shall bake her some scones. She probably just needs someone to talk to. Sit down. Sit. You do no such thing, do you, Henry? Whatever happens in Cedar House has nothing to do with us. Understand? Joanna is a vicious bitch, like Matilda was a vicious bitch. They deserve all they get. You have no right to stop me. You do as I say. We now have evidence that Blakeney's a violent man. Also, he was quite able to get Matilda to take off her clothes, put on the skull's bridle and get into the bath. All he had to do was say he wanted to paint her like that. No wonder there were no bruises. But why? He didn't know about the will. Nobody did. That's what he says. Look at his alibi. It's not one word of truth in it. Besides, I don't trust Sarah Blakeney. They planned this together. Number 20? My God, that's practically a murder weapon. She didn't. They didn't. I'll stake my life on it. Mm. It's not much of a bet, really. Surprise if Jack Blakeney isn't on that list as well. Tell me how much you love me, Jack. I love you this much. You can hurt me if you want. Anything. Steal something that was worthless to him. I still say the Blakeneys. Everything points at them. Gillespie didn't know anything about the key. His prints are all over the hall table and the decanter in the drawing room. There's no prints of his at the back of the house which corroborates his story that Matilda always let him in the front door. Hmm. I can see myself arresting those two. Yes. Yes. I'll be right over. 
Hmm? Jack Blakeney's just half throttle Joanna. I'll bring him in. Oh, no. I'll do it. You stay here and have your bread and butter pudding. Oh, call the station. Organise a press conference for three. I can't believe it. Coop, I have to tell you, you didn't make promotion. I did all I could, but I was outvoted. The board said you were far too emotional for an inspector. Come on. Everybody knows you're a good copper. Jack going to be all right? <laughs> Not if your mother sticks to her statement. This is all my fault. No. It's probably mine. I mess up everybody's life, not just my own. Oh, Jack's pretty good at messing up lives, believe you me. Doesn't need your help. I love him. I love him too. Like a father. I suppose. Not that he's like a father, of course. You've decided what you're going to do about the termination. You haven't got much longer, you know. I'll give evidence against Hughes, even if that means I go to prison for stealing. That's very brave. I'll find someone for you to talk to. Someone else, I mean. Uh, another colleague. I think that would be best. I mean, whatever you want, but... In the end, you have to make up your own mind about an abortion. I know. Can I be brave about one thing at a time? Oh, yes. Yes. Of course you can. Sally Benedict. Your alibi for the day Matilda was murdered. She says you never spent the night with her. I have to admit, I lied. Would you care to tell us where you were? I don't see the harm now. I went to visit Sarah's father in Cheltenham. Why? No wonder there's so much unsolved crime. You really are hopeless, aren't you? We're all ears. Matilda liked my pictures. She also liked to talk while I painted her. I don't think she'd spoken so frankly to anyone for years, not even to Sarah. She knew I couldn't be shocked. She told me about her affairs, about her sexual tastes. And she told me about the bastard daughter she'd had with Paul Merriman. What, you knew about that? Yeah. Problem was, she'd begun to believe that Sarah was the child she'd given away for adoption. I thought this was an unhealthy fantasy. And it was beginning to interfere with my painting. You didn't want to spoil the picture with a lie. Exactly. So I went to Sarah's father to find out the truth. And did you? No. Sarah's father hates me at the best of times. I tried to explain, but he kept giving me large gins. Somehow we ended up arguing about Picasso. Anyway, I resolved to have it out with Sarah and Matilda when I got back. But when I got back... Matilda was dead. So you encouraged the old girl to believe that Sarah was her daughter so she'd leave her money to her. Then you killed her. I didn't want Matilda's love for Sarah to be based on a delusion. You see... She genuinely did love Sarah. It even surprised her. For so long, love for Matilda had just been a trick that you used to get people, generally men, to do what you wanted. When Matilda saw my picture, she wept. Because you didn't just show her scars, you showed her tenderness. Something she'd always suppressed. I hope you value old Coop as much as you should. Even if I believe any of this garbage, this art criticism. 
It still doesn't explain why you tried to strangle Joanna. I wanted to scare her. You know, I thought it might make her see sense about Ruth. I couldn't stand to watch that child suffering anymore. Oh, give us a break. Also, I found out something you should have noticed weeks ago. What's that, Sherlock? Even the quietest murder could be heard in the other house. Can I speak to Mr. Howard, please? It's Dr. Sarah Blakeney. It's about the Cedar Estate. Haven't I had some already? No, dear, that was yesterday. Hmm. So confusing. You'll not leave me, will you, Duncan? Of course not. You'll feel better soon. Sergeant Cooper will be cross with me if I don't remember everything. Try not to worry about the police. I love you too much to see you upset by them. You must be quiet. You need to rest. Their questions can wait. We're quite safe here in our little house. Yes. Sex isn't everything, is it? Where are you going to get on the estate? Thirty. Thirty. They'd have been Georgian. Very tasteful, quality homes. She said she was planning to set up a trust for her daughter and needed a lot of cash. I thought I'd write to you direct. We could do a similar deal. Uh, the letter, the original letter calling off the deal, um, do you still have that? Of course, we know where everything is. I wonder, would it be possible to see that? Mm -hmm. Janet. Dig out the cedar estate foil, there's a love, and get us a cup of tea. I like the old girl, she drove a hard bargain. But her word was all you needed on the deal. Right, let's have a look. Oh, you might like to look at that. Oh, thank you. Sergeant Cooper, please. Well, can you get a message to him? Ask him to contact Dr. Blakeney. It's urgent. Thank you. There you are. Yeah. I wonder, would you have a clean plastic bag I could put this in? I don't know. Why? There may be prints. Matilda never wrote this. She never typed a letter in her life. Tell you now. Julia Sefton is defying her father. She is going to testify. Also, one of the other girls, Gina McNeese. With their testimony and your statement, we'll be able to put Hughes away for a very long time. Women can be quite brave when they're not being beaten around the head. I know. When you came to the school to question me, you said you wished your daughters had my advantages. Well, well, I only. I wish I'd had theirs. I mean, if if one of them was pregnant. I oh my God. Doesn't show yet, but I have to decide. 
Sarah won't tell me what to do. She says it's my choice. Oh, that's just typical. God. You think she's wrong? I think she's a fool. To have a baby as a result of what they did to you is absurd. In a few years, when you've found a decent man who loves you, then your babies will be wanted and you'll be free to be the kind of mother you want to be. Now, with guilt over your granny's death, all this, it's absurd. And that's what you tell your daughter? It is. Look, I'm a silly old copper, if you like, but I've seen a lot of life. Life at its worst. If you can believe it, people who suffered things that make your problems look like a picnic. You can always tell who will survive and fight back. You're one of those. Life dealt you a shitty hand, but you're not like your mother. I'm sorry, but I'm saying what I think. Would you mind very much if I gave you a hug? for Matilda Gillespie's diaries. Her diaries? Did she keep a diary? I never knew that. Why did you lie to us about Ruth Lassell's being at the house the day Matilda died? You can hear everything through that wall. Did I? We have a witness who saw you entering the house using the key that's kept under the flower pot. Yet you told us categorically you hadn't been in the house for years. Must have slipped my mind. How did he get her to take the pills? You can't think I killed her. That's really too preposterous. Then why the lies? Why the forged letter to Howard and Sons? Why steal the diaries? What was in them? You knew she was going to sell the land. There'd be a housing estate in your beloved garden. Your life had become hell. My life's been hell for years. Sergeant, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've had such a guilty conscience. I have to tell you the truth. I said that Duncan was with me, and that is what I believed. You see, I was watching the lottery, and he gave me a glass of whiskey. I'm not in the habit of taking a drink, and I must have dozed off. When he shook me awake, it, it was match of the day. I must have slept for three hours. I'm afraid that's Mother Valley I'm talking. What went on next door, Mrs. Orloff? Oh, Jess. I think you'd better go and lie down, dear. You're making a spectacle of yourself. Well, Duncan only wants me to tell you bits. It's only fair to tell you everything. We wrote the anonymous letter. I'm sorry about this. Do you have a typewriter? Of course not. What would I want with a typewriter? Duncan, how can you tell such fibs? We had the old portable. The scouts came by collecting. Duncan said we didn't use it anymore. He wanted to write detective stories once, you see. And he lost interest. The typewriter. Was it the local troupe? Oh, yes. Such a well-spoken boy. He's gone to a good home, I'm sure. Where did they take it? Bosnia. You can speak to him for five minutes. I shouldn't even let you do that. Be careful. Ah! Oh, God's sake. Sorry. This isn't a game. My father informs me that you came over raving about me being adopted, for God's sake. You thought you'd gone mad. Then you drink a pint of gin and you bath out on the sofa where you spend the night. Why couldn't you tell the police that instead of inventing stories about Sally Benedict? Matilda had me half convinced you were her daughter. You could have just asked me. I didn't want you to be hurt. 
You didn't want to hurt me. If it was true. What's that? It's my birth certificate, you bloody idiot. You stupid, stupid man. What the hell did you think you were doing going off to Joanna's? What did you think you were going to achieve? I thought I could scare her. <laughs> I thought if I gave her a shock in my sober room, I'd make her see sense about Ruth. But most of all, I couldn't stop thinking about her neck. You know, I can't finish the picture if I can't get it right. Oh. Keith Smollett upstairs. Oh. Now, I know you dislike him, but he is an excellent solicitor. If you tell him everything, just play the game. Maybe we can get you out on bail. I warn you, if he tells me what a saint you are and how you should have married him instead of me, I'll opt for the gas chamber. If he says one word about his sodding CD collection, I'll eat his liver. Shut up, shut up. If Joanna doesn't change her story, you are liable to be charged with attempted. Murder. Jack, it's not a joke. So, we're not getting a divorce then? No good we? <laughs> Please don't cry. <laughs> I am. Mean... I'm not crying. I just want to hold you. Why are you still here? Nobody's paying you. I'm not paying you. Why are you scrubbing that table, for God's sake? First of the month, scrub the table. Robert's turning the compost. He wants everything perfect in case she comes back. Comes back? She's dead. You found the body, you idiot. Matilda's not coming back. She might. Where's that ridiculous husband of yours? I can't open the bathroom window. Turn the compost, like I said. Where is the compost heap, you imbecile? Diaries. Nothing left. There might have been fingerprints. I was three when I saw her put the pillow on her father. He was in his wheelchair by the window. She held it over his face and smiled at me. Run along, dear. Grandpa's sleeping. a deal. Sarah is going to set up a trust for you and a trust for Ruth. But you must return to London and have treatment for your addiction. I prepared a statement. You will sign it. It says simply that you were mistaken in claiming that Jack Blakeney tried to murder you, that you both wanted sex, and that you were interrupted by Violet. You said a deal. So far, I see bugger all in it for me. I have here your little pharmacy. Ruth told me where you hide it. There's enough here for me to charge you, not just with possession, but with dealing. I've been talking to the Met. They've interviewed some of your London friends. They were not very loyal to you. 
Look, I know they found you the clients to finance your habit, but you know the law. It's you who'll be charged with soliciting. That's where we'd begin. You bastard. Your looks are all you have left now. They'll not last much longer. A spell in jail won't help. Sign this statement and you'll be comfortable for the rest of your life. This is blackmail. Give yourself a chance. I could ruin you. Why are you doing this? Oh, you're doing it for her, aren't you? You're in love with that moon-faced doctor. She'll never look at you. Not in a million years. I know. I'm gonna get washed. And have my property back. Not till you sign. If you don't want earth on the statement, you can wash in the kitchen sink. everything. I've told Paul everything. There's nothing left to hide. It's what we should have all done 30 years ago. Then Matilda wouldn't have been able to manipulate us with our lies. Bloody sight easier to go there than where I have been, I can tell you. Well, it's not all car chases and birds with big chests, you know. There are 322 scout troops taking part in the appeal. There are five sub-collection points. When a stuff comes in, there is an initial sort through before it's passed on. OK, OK, you're a bloody hero. You've got nice legs, too. Let's see how good your dictation is. Put a bit of paper in it. <coughs> I'll type there. Dear Mr. Howard, despite the attractiveness of your offer, hey, you can touch type. Can't everybody? I have decided that I can no longer consider it. Yours sincerely, Matilda with an H, Gillespie, i.e., message. Careful. This is a valuable antique. You should know that typewriters have signatures, too. We know you wrote the letter. We also found a thumbprint of yours on the ashes of a diary. You burnt the diaries, you forged the letter, and you killed Matilda Gillespie. Violet is not strong. If there's a long trial, it would break her. And spare her. Tell us everything. If you plead guilty, it'll all be over sooner. At my age, you're not thought to have sexual feelings. Is it not passing strange that desire should so long outlive performance? Oh, I could perform. It just required a little stage management. Humiliation. I needed it. She liked to give it. 
When I was young and fit, she took some pleasure in my body. I loved her then. I still love her now. I flattered myself she wanted me near her. We would not touch. She would stay and watch me. One time there was a mantra of insults too. But even that was too much trouble now. In my heart, I suppose I knew that I was just a symbol of all the men who'd humiliated her. What I thought love was revenge. That's why she chose to tell me when I was as low as I could be. I've got a very good deal with Howard and Sons. I'm selling the garden for a housing estate. It won't be very pleasant for you and Violet, but I'm sure you'll manage. Clean up after you. You see, Violet and I could never have sex. On our honeymoon, I made the mildest suggestion. She locked herself in the bathroom and cried for two days. I didn't insist. There were prostitutes. It was a marriage. Tell us about the murder. And you better switch that thing on. D.I. Harmer, D.S. Cooper, interviewing Wednesday, the 1st of October, 1750. Duncan Jeremiah Orloff. She had said that it was going to be our last session, that she was finding it too tiring and boring. I had the barbiturates already dissolved in a hip flask. We always had a stiff drink first. Barbiturates affected her very quickly. By the time we were in the hall, she was half asleep. She didn't struggle as I put the bridle on. I carried her up the stairs to the bathroom. I got her into the bath. I left her there while I got the knife from the kitchen drawer, my little bouquet of weeds. When I cut the veins, she barely flinched. In my mind, I had my little list. Arrange weeds, white prints, place glass by bed. Wash and put away my glass. All the while, blood pumped from her veins into the bath water. I took the diaries, putting them in a carrier bag I had with me. I also took any letters from Howard and Sons I could find. I let myself out with the key, put it back under the flower pot. I burned the diaries in our incinerator and buried the ashes in the middle of the compost. How long did all this take? Several hours. It was very exhausting. Mrs. Arloff slept through it all. That day when she came back from shopping, I gave her a stiff whiskey laced with barbiturin. In any case, she was used to me pottering around in the garden while there was still light. How did you feel then? As I smelled the burning leather of her diaries, it felt good. I had destroyed Matilda and her poison. At 
wish the rest of us could now keep some dignity. I don't want to speak to her. I think you must. Well, I'm not going back to her. Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to. Mummy? You took your time. I'm going to London. I have friends there. Here, everybody's against me. What do you want? What I wanted was justice. What I wanted was my due after all these years of suffering. What I've got is nothing. Sarah's going to make a trust for us. She's stolen you too. She's taken my money and my daughter. <laughs> it's not like that. Isn't it? She wormed her way into Matilda's heart. Now she's worming her way into yours. I'm pregnant. You stupid little bitch. <laughs> I'm going to have an abortion. You want me to blame myself? Want me to carry guilt, think I'm a bad mother. Don't want you to do anything at all. You've done enough. I just want to know someday why love died in our family. It didn't. How can something die that was never born? Please, Ruth, come with me. I need you. I can't. Please don't make me do this on my own. I can't. Well, go to hell. I love you. Terrible. Well, you don't look too good yourself. Well, I'll leave you two little birds to batter each other to death. Now shut up, Coop. We're all going inside to demolish the rest of Sarah's decent wine. So what? Is he free now? I want you to know this man is a hero. I will paint his portrait, his wife's portrait, his kids, his pets for nothing, whenever and wherever he wants. So, plea of insanity then. Joanna's withdrawn her statement, and Violet can't remember what she saw. Cooper did a little blackmail. God, Jack. Is this true? He's exaggerating. Stone bloody gospel. You don't deserve this. I know. And now, let's party. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still on duty. I've got to get back. Gary Armour's expecting me. I have to take statements in Bournemouth this afternoon. Well, you'll be back for the city now, you promise? Yes. Goodbye, Sarah. I can see that I'm covered with dirt. Look after Ruth and this idiot.
you want to blow her down? Father says I am old enough, and that if Mother was alive, she would not mind. She knew about men's needs. I am not to tell anyone, or he will use the bridle over and over again. Mother should never have done such things. Then Father would not do them to me. I am only ten years old. 